in thinking about the subject in Lacanian terms, in Lacanian psychoanalysis, we have a constant uh, challenge. And this is the challenge. Even if we're card-carrying Lacanians, psychoanalysts, so on and so forth, there is a tendency, we talk about the subject, but we seem so often to gravitate back to the dimensions of something like an acting ego. It's very difficult, I think, to grasp fully this idea of the subject in terms of exactly how much it is set aside from and apart from the everyday notions of subjectivity. So maybe that's the crucial point I'm trying to make. There's often this kind of attrition or erosion or we use the notion of the subject in Lacan, but before we even know it, we've started to think back about the subject in terms of subjectivity. So that's our challenge, trying to, to break that, that tendency. And in doing so, you could say Lacan is asking us or challenging us to think in a very counterintuitive way. We live in a psychological culture where subjectivity, notions of the ego, notions of the self are prevalent, are omnipresent. So the challenge is how can we think very differently about the subject in ways which do not simply gravitate back to those conceptualizations. And in doing this, in trying to think the subject in Lacanian terms, we are very much going against the grain of, of popular cultural understandings of what a self, a uh, subjectivity is. And we are very much, I think, swimming against the tide, swimming against upstream, trying to convey something of this notion. So we're now, our second talk of four, going to emphasize how the subject in Lacan is not ego and is not psychological. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a quote. Um, this is on page 174 of my Six Moments in Lacan, and it's referring back to some of the characterizations we've seen in Bowie's work, in Rodriguez's work, when they talk about the subject in Lacan. This subject, the subject in Lacan, lacks the minimal continuity or permanence that is fundamental in many of our basic assumptions of what subjectivity is. In other words, we don't look for permanence, just as we don't look for substance, we don't look for continuity. There's rather disruption, discontinuity, which seems to characterize this notion of the subject. Here's the quote. The Lacanian subject is not a permanent or constant entity. It is an episodic or vanishing phenomenon. It is the subject as event which, like the unconscious itself, fades and then resurfaces, proving not just elusive, but essentially discontinuous. The subject is not, in fact, an entity at all, certainly not in any substantial sense. It is rather a flash, a pulse, a spark, a type of truth possibility. Utterly contingent on the productions of speech that paradoxically it itself produces, a point we've already uh, discussed, this subject is at once constituted in and as speech. And in this sense, the subject encompasses an irreconcilability. It is the disjunction events between the act of speaking and what is spoken. Two facets of speech which can never quite be fully reconciled. The subject is the disjunction. The subject is the split, is the way that we try to describe it in the first of these four lectures. As we move on, we will start to look at some of the philosophical conceptualizations that Slava Zizek adds to this Lacanian concept, but I'll introduce one just very briefly here. As Zizek puts it in this book, The Ticklish Subject, he says, the subject is strictly correlative with ontological indecidability. So that's one way of thinking about it in more, slightly more verbose, I suppose, philosophical terms, that the subject is ontological undecidability itself. Or, as I prefer, it's a non-matchup of statement and enunciation. Now, what we want to do a little bit now is think about some of how Lacan says psychology gets it wrong. When I first started going through these characterizations and, and, and Lacan's sounding off on where he thinks psychology gets things wrong, I was like, okay, you know, he, he's a kind of cantankerous, cranky dude. He wants to say lots of bad things about psychology because he wants to, to prioritize the importance of psychoanalysis. So I thought he was being a bit cranky and a little bit uh, polemical. But the more one reads these ideas and the more one tries to get a sense of what the subject, the concept of the subject is doing in Lacan, the more one starts to, to get the point. So, how can we say this? Lacan raises several objections to psychology's portrayal of the subject. 
Um, we will mention some of those ideas, but let's, by way of a kind of mini preamble, just say two things. For Lacan, the subject is always the subject of the unconscious, is always the subject of language. Now, inasmuch as we may have many psychological notions of self or subjectivity, those start to uh, prove inadequate for Lacan inasmuch as they do not prioritize those things, the unconscious and language. But it's not just the subject of the unconscious and the subject of language, it's also the subject of death drive. And if we bear that in mind, we'll start to see why this notion of the subject is not the ego. It cannot be reduced to an ego. It is fundamentally non-egoic. This we see early on in Lacan in seminars, at seminar one, but also in his second seminar, constant reiteration of these facts. Let me see if I can find a, a nice quote to develop that. Ah, so in seminar two, he says, the subject is decented in relationship to the individual as ego. Okay, the subject is decented in relation to the individual as ego. The subject is not the ego. Continuing my characterization, the ego as the epicenter of unique individuality, as the point of reflexive capacity within the domain of experience. I'm talking about here how we're often uh, encouraged to think about the ego in these terms, non lacanian terms. This ego is epicenter of unique individuality as point of reflexive capacity is a seductive and seemingly self-evident concept that Lacan takes issue with. So I'm saying two things here. Number one, we're deploying uh, Lacan's critique of the ego, but we're also explaining how, or trying to explain, how he thinks the subject is definitively not the ego. So here's a quote from page 58 of Lacan's Seminar 2. He says, the institution of the ego retains, insofar as it is centered on experience of consciousness, a captivating character, which one must rid oneself of in order to see to our conceptions of the subject. I try to lead you away from its attraction with the aim of showing where, according to Freud, the reality of the subject is. In the unconscious, excluded from the system of the ego, the subject speaks. So, this is a kind of, it sounds to me like he's taking issue with a phenomenological prioritization of consciousness, conscious experience, by noting how, in a sense, that the ego is a kind of captivating concept, that the ego is leading us, that concept is leading us to focus on the wrong phenomena, ironically enough, the wrong stuff, if we're going to try and understand what really underlies what makes the subject. I'll just emphasize that last part. I try to lead you away from this is attraction, okay? The attraction both of the ego and of the conceptualization of the ego with the aim of showing where, according to Freud, the reality of the subject is. In the unconscious, excluded from the system of the ego, the subject speaks. So the subject is, it's not just that the subject is not the ego. The subject is fundamentally excluded from the domain of the ego, okay? So even stronger point. The subject is that which is excluded from the domain of the ego. As we build on and add to this, we'll also start to get a sense that maybe this will be part of the conclusion. It's not just the case that the subject is not within the ego, but the subject is also, you could argue, not within consciousness itself. One more brief um, takedown from Lacan. He makes a declaration on the 7th of July, 1954, sticking with the uh, Seminar 2, that, and I quote him, psychology is an error on perspective on the human being. Psychology is an error on, of perspective on the human being. Pretty bold, pretty polemical statement, but one way of trying to make sense of that is to say, in as much as the discipline of psychology leads us to think about the subject as an ego, that is a fundamental error. What is most fundamental to the subject, this stuff of language, language in action, speech, unconscious stuff, unconscious enactments. That's the domain of the subject. And if we're focusing on either an ego as the principal way of thinking subjectivity, or if we're thinking about uh, our notion of the subject, which is fundamentally conscious, fundamentally uh, self-reflexive, then we are missing what the subject is. These things are crucial. And of course, furthermore, another way 
of trying to interpret or underline his point that, as it were, psychology is an error, is that you could say that much of psychology is focused on trying to create object knowledge about subjectivity, to create categories, whether it's personality or intelligence or gender categories, so on and so forth, objectifications through which we would try to understand the subject, human subjectivity. And, and Lacan is trying to say we need to leave all of that behind. All of that is problematic. As a subject of language, which emerges from structure, the subject is not a subject of development. So I've added these points here. Not only are we saying that the subject is not the ego, but it is also not something, an adaptive entity, a developmental entity, a biological entity. Hence, it is not an entity of psychological traits or features. Again, just building on this point that the discipline of psychology, the way it tries to apprehend, engage, study, produce, uh, make knowledge about, and intervene within the subjectivity of human beings, all of it for, for Lacan is problematic. <clears throat> the subject is not or should not be a subject of the analyst's understandings. I like this point because it, it sounds very counterintuitive. Okay, we, we see all these things. He, doesn't, he takes issue with the, the idea that subjectivity, the subject should be seen as adaptive, as related to nature, as, as proceeding in a kind of developmental timetable, as reducible to biological facets. But now a slightly different point seems to be coming to the fore. And it relates to what we spoke about in terms of objectification. So let me just say, as I've tried to write it here, it's not or should not be a subject of the analyst's understandings. In other words, you could say that the subject of psychoanalysis should continue to evade any sense of capture within the categories of object understanding. This subject is not reducible to objectifications. It's not reducible to the objects of psychology. It's not reducible to uh, object categories, those types of understanding. Let's try and develop this point a little bit. These comments suggest that in Lacan's early work, the subject is a type of non-content, type of non-content. In other words, you don't really adequately approach the subject by thinking that as a collection of contents. The subject is rather something akin to an empty form. In other words, you could say the subject is not positively theorized, but approached rather by a series of warnings and misapprehensions. In short, the notion of the subject tells us more about how to work clinically with the unconscious than it does about the nature of individuals. Let's make that point again. The subject as a concept tells us more about how to work clinically than it does about the nature of individuals. In a way, all this emphasis on the, the, never reduce, the non-reducibility of the subject to knowledge, the non-reducibility of the subject to object, is another way of telling us you're making the wrong move if you're trying to uh, encapsulate the subject you're working with clinically as an object of knowledge, as some object you can know, as some object you can predict, as some object you can measure, all of which are things that happen within psychology. To do that is to be fundamentally missing the point, and it's also to locate yourself in a fundamentally incorrect and perhaps even unethical way as a clinician the openness of the category of the subject is a point that we will develop, we'll return to, but one pragmatic concept of this, sorry, pragmatic point, pragmatic value of this concept in early Lacan is just to tell us, don't presume to know. Don't presume to know in any definitive way or any objectivizable or objectifying way the psychoanalysand, the analysand you're working with. To know who that subject is, to know what they are, to reduce them to categories of knowledge, of categories of the object, is to miss the subject as such, which thus entails a posture of not knowing and a receptiveness to its realization in the unexpectedness and otherness of speech. So again, a very counterintuitive point, but the idea is not to know. And the idea is not to reduce the subject to the categories of an object or some kind of measurement and so on and so forth. And you could say all of those attempts to somehow reduce, to somehow claim, to somehow uh, verify or encapsulate the subject in those categories are very anxiety-reducing for the clinician. So you could see why one would try to do that. 
But Lacan's idea is rather try to remain alive to the unexpectedness, to the otherness of the speech of the subject and not to empathize, not to try and understand, not to see yourselves in them. So we could say then that the subject as empty, the empty subject, refutes and frustrates our attempts to encapsulate the person in such terms. And to make that point again, the notion of the subject as it's being utilized here, you'll remember earlier on, I said that there's an important pragmatic implication of always thinking the subject in the negative as what it isn't, rather than being able to try and say what it is. And now we, I think, start to get that point. And the point is that to think the subject in these terms tells us much more about how to situate oneself in working clinically. In other words, the concept of the subject tells you more about how to work clinically than anything about definitive, um, categorical, about um, the subject of clinical analysis itself. Okay, let us draw to a conclusion then. <clears throat> One way of trying to uh, convey some of what I've just said is to say that we should make the same qualification of the subject that Lacan sometimes makes of the unconscious. That is to say, the status of the subject is not ontological, but is ethical. I'll put it up here somewhere. The, subject is not, the status of the subject is not ontological. In other words, something to know, something to philosophize about, something to grasp. It's not ontological. It's not about a certain categorization of being, but we should approach the subject as ethical. Let me qualify this. This qualification signals that the real priority lies not with engaging the subject in objectivized forms, but at the level of acts, at the level of uh, events. The real priority in thinking subject is ethical rather than ontological. The real priority lies with engaging not with objectifications, but with acts of the subject. And this is a fact which in turn engenders an attention to change and an awareness of the agency of the subject not to be what it was. This attunes the clinician to the prospect of change and it imparts an awareness of the agency of the subject and an agency of the subject to possibly be something different. So there's, there's a, a couple of uh, points of emphasis here. The whole game, so to speak, the whole attention is not to try and fix and understand and reduce to knowledge and understanding what the subject is, but rather to try to engage with how the subject is an event, is an event which means that it's not encapsulatable as an object, but an event that is in various moments of speech, in various moments of the subject being exercised, made possible in its symbolic productions, open to being changed, open to changing themselves, open to being enacted in a different kind of way. So you could say that the emphasis here is not on knowing, but rather on how to be attuned to what is being done, what is being spoken, how the subject emerges, maybe in slips of speech, in incompatibilities, disjunctions of speech, and how those moments lead to the possibility of the realization or the change of the subject. And that takes us back to our Leonardo Rodriguez quote in the first talk, where he makes that emphasis that some of the aims of psychoanalysis are precisely the realization of the subject. Let us make one last point and conclude the second lecture. We could add to what we've been saying. We've been saying a lot of knots, but the subject is not. The subject must be thought not merely beyond the confines of the ego, beyond the confines of some kind of object way of thinking about psychology, but must be also thought beyond the terrain of consciousness. I found a nice quote in a book by Michael Lewis. It's a book on Lacan and Derrida. And he says, this is a quote from him, his book. He says, that of which one is conscious is always an object for consciousness. In other words, to apprehend something in consciousness is always to potentially make it an object of sorts. If that's the case, and here's a direct quote from him, the only genuine subject is one that has not been objectified. It is a subject that is acting, an agent. If the unconscious subject is fundamentally and always unconscious, it can enter consciousness, conscious awareness only in the form that distorts its true nature. So let's, let's try and offer a couple of comments on that quote. There's a suggestion here then, not only is the subject definitively not 
the ego or not within the ego, but also it seems to refute being conscious. It seems to uh, be outside of what is conscious and maybe it's kind of fleetingly realized as a pulse, as a, as a speech act, as a truth possibility produced through language, but it seems to be more that which is outside of consciousness than what is in. So we're emphasizing here a couple of things that this notion of the subject has an affinity with the unconscious, that's an understatement, it's more than an affinity, it seems to, as it were, be a potentiality that's constantly within the domain of the unconscious, in as much as it's not conscious, and in as much as it's not made an object, which is the tendency for any object of conscious perception, but it's also not reducible to the status of the object, and it seems to be that which distorts, it's that which is outside consciousness. We can only approach it in a form that distorts its true nature, that which is known through its distortions. I love this point. It does slightly bend my uh, brain. It does give me a uh, uh, brain freeze, but it does point to a broader theme in psychoanalysis that there are certain facets of the human subject that can never be expressed or encountered directly, but are only realized in their distortions. And it's on that point that we'll end this talk.